two is done. It's finished. When did the conversation start happening about Inquisition? And uh, when did you start really hammering down, this is the story we want to tell? Uh, we knew the broad strokes of, of uh, DA3, uh, DAI now, yeah. Um, before we actually were even, start, we even started DA2. Um, the, the initial story we had planned was much, much longer. Um, but I think it, it, when, we, when we started looking at what we actually intended to do, it's like, well, we were sort of, we were sort of the, the, the writers sort of drew out the, the arc we had originally intended, and it went much longer. We were like, there's something, as we were we sort of kept hashing it out, hashing it, hashing it out, it was like, uh, there's something that, it, that just feels weak. And I think at some point, I was like, okay, okay wait, 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 wait. I just cut it in half. I was like, and look at this, this arc here as a complete arc. How does that work? And they're like, Yes, yes, that, that that felt better. So that, I think that, that that was the when we finally sat down, and I think it was um, towards the end of the DLC process for DA two, because mm-hmm. um, we we had been sort of intending to do an expansion for DA two, uh, a full expansion, and uh, that got cut. And I think I, I went home angry, and I took a month off just to to cool off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like. I'm like. I need to take a month off, and they're like, "Why?" Sure. Because otherwise, you're gonna have meetings about the next game, and I'm gonna be that guy at the end of the table with his arms folded and just a giant frown on my face, and I don't want to be that guy. So let me go cool off. And they're like, "Okay, go." <laughs> so, I, so I did, and I uh, came back and I'm like, "All right, all right, let's let's, let's tackle this." And it felt good. And and, and uh, here's what here's our sort of uh, the story we had sort of in in the expansion. We had that story, and then the story we had planned for for. Uh, um, uh, DA3 originally and okay here's what they were together and that was too long and sort of okay here's here's what we could do with what we have left and 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 that felt that felt right and it was still it was still the arc we had we had always intended and it still hit sort of the 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 the, the pace of lore reveal for the world right mm-hmm. uh, I'm not, I'm not going to spoil anything with like the stuff you get to by by the very end that's like oh okay we're sort of looking at larger developments in the Dragon Age setting. Um, so once we sort of had pieced that together, I mean, this is before everybody, everybody else, I think, was still working on the deal, the second DLC, mm-hmm. or had just finished. I don't remember now. There was a, there was a, somewhere around that period, and we were in transition. So this is this is us. Uh, the writers always have to be in there first, sort of working on the concepting, and, and we were sitting down with the concept artists and having lots of meetings because they were talking about uh, having exploration be a much bigger element and how okay how are we going to fit the story in in that because uh, you know lots of exploration wasn't really something that um, Bioware focused on and that was more an element of. Um, Open world games. And so, are we having open world? Is, that, is this open world? No, it's something similar. Okay, so how do we have a have a, have a narrative that exists alongside the open world? And the answer, of course, was well, no. They, they can't be alongside. Can't be separate. You can't be like, okay, I'm going to go run around in the open world. Yeah. Oh, and now I'm going to do. I mean, I guess I guess no. That, that's even wrong because I guess in a way that is how it works, but. Uh, how do we keep the two tied together enough that it doesn't feel like you're doing two entirely separate things? And how do we make it so that the the progression of your of the the, the crit path plot uh, is tied to your progression in the in the, in the exploration, so that you deciding to well I'm going to go do the the main plot now it doesn't just come from you decide making that decision that there is there is things you do in exploration that not only narratively tie to um, what you need to do next in the, the main story, but that you that it is, it is required that there is a purpose to it that leads into the main, main story. Mm-hmm. So yeah. the those, are, those were all challenges we had to, had to talk about and figure out how we were going to do that because it was new. Were there any things again? Because you mentioned before that your original story plan for Inquisition it was twice as long as what players ended up with. Oh, uh, the the length of the the, the plot arc. We, we were yeah. kind of. It wasn't like the, the, we had twice as much content. Of course, the yeah. Amount of, the amount of ground we were going to cover with the story was, was twice as long. And, I mean, the, that, the rest of that plot arc still, still exists, and it's, it's now in Patrick Weeks' hands. Like, good luck, buddy. 
Good luck. Go, good luck going the rest of the distance, and, and we'll see how that <laughs> how he does that. Well, well, are there any? Because obviously we can't speak to that because that'll ruin the next uh, you know ten fifteen years for me playing these games. So right. um, the story arcs that maybe didn't work at that point, not the stuff you're going to do, and just decided we'll wait for that for the next game, but mm-hmm. the different endings and the different conclusions to this story or progressions of the story in Dragon Age Inquisition. I'd love to know if there was other story arcs that you were exploring that you just decided really don't work from what you've been developing. Um, hmm. There were, there was a, there was a, the, the end of the game was actually done, redone quite a bit. Uh, I think we, we, we wanted to be very careful on exactly that kind of note we hit. Um, and so there was there was a lot of revision. I mean, I can't point to anything specific because it was mostly about the presentation uh, of of how we how we were doing it. I mean, when I look back, I kind of wish um, that I had brought uh, uh, the main villain um, personally into the story more previous to that. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, that that there was a couple of cuts where where that was the case, and and so then ultimately when I look back and I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. if I if I fuss about about, about the uh, the overall arc and, and the way things rolled. I think that, that's one regret I have. But, I mean, uh, in terms of the, the, the ending, no, the ending always looked like that. It was always the, you know, your, your, your epic battle with you know, two dragons in the sky fighting each other. And, and there are various ways that happened, but that, it always looked that way. And specific to the, uh, the little wink, because this is, I, I guess, the one question that we can... <laughs> That we can ask, and there wouldn't be a problem. Uh, <laughs> the specific way, and of course, spoilers for, for anyone that has not uh, completed the game. But I think if you're listening to this, years ago, la, la. yeah, yeah, yeah. This this is something you should have already played it at this point. Um, the the wink with Solus and Flemeth. The one question that's been asked, yeah. I think, across the board with uh, by many different fans. Obviously, we don't need to say what does that mean for the future. But in terms of storytelling. Why did you believe that that little addition was uh, needed? Why, why did you add that in? Ah, uh, you know, if I think of, if I think of the, the one cut that did occur, there was a, a playable epilogue. That's right. That's right. That, that, that got cut by the end. Is that you? You the search for solace kind of epilogue. Wow. I mean, it, some players are going to hear that are going to lose their minds because they, they they picture it being something that it totally wasn't. Okay. Um, it was it was too much. It it, it it felt like you know your end battle did have a had to have a conclusion, so it, it felt sort of misleading. Um, but we wanted to preserve sort of the the, the I, don't, I don't know if you want to call it sequel bait. We wanted to preserve the sense of of um, the acknowledgement of what Solus was, so that the, when a the player hits that moment and thinks back about their their relate the, the the totality of their relationship with Solus, they can go, oh, okay. And I mean, it's it totally spawns more questions than it answers, of mm-hmm. course. And that, that is meant to do that, sort of a, 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 a or you know that the, okay, on its surface, this this is a very villain appears, you defeat the villain. You save the day, right? That, that, that's the progression. But yeah. there was more happening under the surface than maybe you were aware. And I think that that we wanted to preserve that moment of of uh, the player being able to go, oh, oh, and and you even maybe look back and, and play through again and 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 talk to talk to him or or listen to things Crypheus says and, and sort of you know let let the let the fan theories go, you know, <laughs> yeah. at least the Kraken. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was intentional. Because I mean, even though um, the, the playable epilogue is like, uh, yeah, 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 I can see why this this is an issue. I think the part of the issue was mostly just uh, um, could we do it in a way that the justification to what we were trying to do. So we scaled down what we tried to do and boiled it down to what we need is this one particular piece to to to, to be thrown to the players so they could go, oh, okay. And so we we boil it down to that. And put that in their mind so that you totally at that last that last thing that sort of makes your view on what happened before sort of tilt about forty five degrees. Mm-hmm. That's that's what we wanted. That, that was, and I think I think I think it succeeded. I would be remiss if I didn't ask what that quest for Solus epilogue looked like, even in the very early stages. Um, hmm. Do I want to go into that? I went through several versions, so I, I prefer not to not to speculate because uh, sure. I don't think, uh, had we actually proceeded, that it would have looked anything like the, we we started off with the original designs, sort of suggesting it might be. That, that's the problem. So if, if I say, 
Well, it, you know, we've had it several versions, and they were like this. The things that people listening will automatically intend is they'll picture something that would have been like, oh, my God, I, I can't believe you cut that. Yeah. Yes, except that I know that the reason we cut it is because we, we could not have followed through with, with that. I mean, uh, uh, the, the, when we boil it down to that one scene at the end, that ended up, I think, looking really good. And I don't think if we had drawn that out over a much longer period that uh, it, it would have, I don't know, there, there would have been too many issues with it and it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been to the quality that we, we thought it deserved. It'll be forever left in different Word documents and different computers on Bioware. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Well, Locked speaking of mind vault. Yeah, <laughs> speaking to uh, any of the cut content, where do you put Dragon Age Inquisition in terms of the stuff that was left on the cutting room floor in comparison to Origins and DA2, uh, rather? About the same. For both of them or yeah. for... Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, there was, there was lots of stuff that was cut from DA. I mean, but I mean, I think the difference, like, if I did, the difference between, say, that and DA2 is that uh, DA2... It's a percentage of the overall content, I guess. Uh, they still have the same amount of churn on the content, and you know, okay, we cut a bunch of stuff, and 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 uh, it's gone forever or changed forever. Like I mean, uh, I think that the probably biggest difference between that and the other games um, was the DAI. The the content went through a lot more revision as opposed to here's this giant piece that was cut. Like um, the, the, where you go to the ball at Salam Sharal, for instance, that plot went through a lot of different phases um, where the, the it, it didn't change entirely. You were still, it was still, you know, you're going to the ball at Halam Sharal and, and there's the Empress of Orlais there and it's political. Like, that was always the same. But in terms of its presentation, it changed a lot. The, uh, the assault on Adam, Adam and Fortress also went through a lot of different versions. There was a point... There was one that there was a point there where it didn't involve the fate at all. You fell into the uh, the um, the abyss, and you ended up in the deep road. Deep really? Road. Yeah, uh, you, had, you had to sort of find find your way out through the deep roads, and you encountered the the intelligent darkspawn from Awakening, and the oh yeah, yeah. So there were there were all sort of different versions of every every story. Um, and I mean, and, and it, it, it all went. I think the the, the iteration was actually a good thing because when I think back on some of those things, it's like, well, I say that, and it's like the, you could think immediately, oh, I I can imagine what that would have been. Mm, yeah, just try imagining what it would have been, but I imagine it kind of sucking because that's like why, <laughs> why it changed. That that was the the iteration is it was a healthy thing for the most part. I mean, there, there was there was less. Let's there was less. Let's cut this because. Uh, we don't have time and more. Let's cut this because it's just not just not working. You spoke to that earlier, just about the initial idea to have a cameo of almost every single character that was yeah. uh, major characters, in, or was it almost every single, even some of the ancillary coming into DA? Well, I think I mean initially we we wanted to fit somebody everywhere, and and it was I mean uh, if you if you want to look at like things we cut because uh, of content, yeah, that would that would definitely be one. I mean I, I would have liked to have done all of that. I mean, there's there's well there's content there as well, but there's also just not working in that trying to fit in every single character just wouldn't have it wouldn't have worked from a creative standpoint, never mind a content standpoint. So there's always going to be a bit of weighing the scales when it comes to to that kind of decision for sure. Looking back at the overall story of Dragon Age Inquisition, how would you um, describe? what you hope, I guess, players got from that? Because we, we talked about that a lot of what each of these games really gives players. Uh, for Inquisition, you're introduced to a whole lot of new gameplay features, a whole lot of new ways to live and experience in this world. Narratively, how were you able to grab onto those features and still tell an exciting story that goes in line with the other two games? You mean uh, in Inquisition? In Inquisition, yes. The, the, the gameplay, well... I think it was it was a bit of a it was a bit of a challenge at first, just because uh, uh, the the level of exploration was something we had really contended with, and it's like how do you space out the the, the pacing? And I think it, well, part of it was like okay, well, for one, you can't have a ticking time time bomb, you know, mm-hmm. you can't have it be like okay, I can't I can't go to this exploration area because you know it, the world's about to end in five minutes, uh, so that that became something you couldn't do. 
um, it became more about uh, uh, the sort of growing of influence of the organization and how that was sort of a, a fantasy fulfillment kind of kind of deal. Like you know, we did it with every game, sort of talking about what is what is the player fantasy that we are fulfilling here, and it's not necessarily just one. Sometimes we touch several, right? But uh, what what kind of player would would do this and be like, oh, I really I never, that that scratches an itch I didn't even know I had. Sure. So the, the sort of the growth of uh, of uh, an organization that that you aren't just part of because we you know our games often have well, you're you're a gray warden or you're a, you're a specter you're part of some organization. Well, what if you what if you had one and it was yours? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, the, so sort of looking at it from that perspective and how we could even if it's not you don't you don't see the apparatus of the organization all the time. I mean, you do once you get to Skyhold. But uh, the feeling of being part of something that by by the end of the game has gone through its own journey that, you know, now you start off and everyone's sort of scoffing at the Inquisition, you know, with yeah. you're nothing to, to suddenly you're an organization that, that is commanding respect, not not just from people, but from nations and and has influence. And you can feel that not not just in terms of the crit path, but, you know, in terms of what you do in the exploration, the, 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 the idea, the whole, uh, where we, when we brought in the operations on the war table as a thing, like how that could sort of feed into the sense of growth. Um, I think that, that was all a challenge and, and, and took a lot of time. I mean, uh, we worked on this for about three years, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, over time, sort of getting a sense of, of how we wanted to impart that feeling to the player. It was, it was a... It was it was an interesting it was an interesting challenge. Sometimes it se- sometimes it seemed insurmountable, but I mean overall it was it was uh, it was a, it was a lot of fun. Do you think ever the um, tendency to try and tell the story of being a inquisitor and what that meant ever made it a little more difficult to tell the more personal stories of who the inquisitor was in terms of their uh, relationships and their interactions with these established characters. Cause the one thing I did notice in Dragon Age Inquisition is you are kind of pulled in different directions in different ways that I didn't feel as much in uh, the previous games. Um, I don't think it made it more difficult. I think it gave us a lot more to play with. I mean, we could touch on topics that we hadn't really done before, like the, the issue of faith. Um, and talking about uh, the faith of the followers you're with, and they had something you're and having them having them react to the things you did in the plot as opposed to who you were necessarily, and having it uh, so that here's this thing that perhaps you never asked for, perhaps you didn't even want to you're the an inquisitor and maybe you resent that or maybe you embrace it um and uh, talking about the player's growth in terms of how they relate. To what they've become, uh, so I, I, I don't think that was uh, that made it more that made it more difficult. I think that it opened up a lot of opportunity. It is it was different than we've than we've done before, but I think it allowed us a lot more avenues to to talk, to, to talk about the characters rather than just having them say the, the exposition of this is who I am. You, you can look at how they feel about what you've done, about what's happening, and that tells you as much, if not more, of of, uh, of what's going on in their heads. Why did you make the choice to go back to the created backstories of being different races and kind of picking and choosing those characters? It seems like all of the... And adding to that, rather, the fact that you have to deal with two other games and all the choices made there and throwing that into the mix. Why go back to something that may make it even more complicated? Well, there are two separate questions, really. I mean, yes, indeed. One was going back to the, to the different races. I think we always wanted to do that. I mean, I think the only reason ultimately we didn't do that in DA2 was just a matter of choosing which which side we had, which side we were, was going to give us the most impact for the time that we had. And for for DA, it actually um, we wanted to do it, and I think we actually weren't going to. Uh, and then I think um, we got an extra year of development time. Yeah, I think that I think that was it. There was uh, something came along that the EA said, "Yeah, go ahead, do that." And we went, excellent. This is what we will use that extra time for. And I think that was really the, the adding the extra races. Because I think, I think you know, well, some people, I think the majority of players actually will play humans regardless. But I think even to the one who, who plays humans, the fact that those other options were available, even if they don't choose them, has value to them. So there's the people that just love playing elves and love playing dwarves that are, are always wanted to play a canary that will be like, awesome, that, that, that 
thank thank God I don't I don't have to be be forced to yeah. human as if that was something that was a you know, that, that was a restraint. But um, even to the the eighty percent that play humans, the that that the, the, this was an option that, that the possibility was there to play other things has value. So I think looking at it in terms of a, a bang for your buck in terms of development time, it was something we wanted to do. But it's of course it's a it's a big challenge because now it's now it's like okay, so writers. Um, we 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 want the ability to play any race. So now go go through your plans and accommodate that. Okay, all right. Roll up our sleeves. All right, work right. <laughs> yeah, that that was that was uh, that was essentially it. And, and in terms of the now, let's accommodate the the past, the collective past two games worth of choices. That's that's a that's a whole different ball of wax. I mean, it's not. It wasn't something we could just drop. Like like romances. And so this is like, okay, it's our third game. Um, it's established that this is something that Dragon Age does. Uh, so we could, you know, I guess, I guess oh, that's wrong. We could just say, okay, we're putting out this game, and now there's a canon. You, the mm-hmm. choice you made for, you know, this, this, is, this is the story of this game. And, I mean, you would get a lot of people that would be, ah, you're rending their garments, and how can that be? That can never be. <laughs> I mean, if that's what we had done, ultimately... It just would have happened, and they would have accepted it or not, right? Um, but we thought there was value in that. You know, I mean, that's how we sort of said sold Dragon Age as a series. We talked about the series as being one that were it's about the world, but it's about a world that reacts to your choices, your your cumulative choices. And it's not. I mean, a <clears throat> part of the issue with trying to na- write to that narratively is that uh, it's not something that that is going to work for everybody. Because, I mean, even the ones who, as soon as you say it reacts to your choices, they imagine that every single choice they've ever made basically uh, is a divergence that is its own plot, right? Yeah. It's, it, 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 that, that, like, for some, you're going to have some choices that cause major, major changes. And you're going to have some that it's just like, that's a choice you made, and then it's, re- it's referred, it's acknowledged that it happened, but it doesn't really, de- doesn't really develop into anything. And then, and then they're like, they're angry because they're like, well, but I imagined it being so much bigger. Yeah, well, you know, that, 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 that's fair. That's completely fair. So it's not, it's not going to fulfill every fantasy. But I think the, the, the feeling that if, overall, that this is this is an outgrowth of your choices, and that things are things are different because of your choices makes the player feel more invested into the current state of the world. I think that that was that was the ultimate deal. But but the actual process of of trying to figure out how we're going to accommodate that, and, and and how much how much content we can apply, because this is all minority content essentially, mm-hmm. right? Minority content is uh, content that that applies only to a certain type, amount of players. And that, that that the majority of players would never even see this content doesn't mean that content is worthless. I mean, to the player who encounters something that's very specific to their particular playthrough, so they they left uh, uh, Loghain, uh, they made him a great warden at the end of end of Dragon Age Origins, and he never died. And you go into Adam and Fortress, and and you encounter Loghain, the great the great warden, and he's a major part of that plot. For the player who did that, they're like, oh my god, that's awesome. So. Encountering some things like that along the way will make make it more worthwhile. But the process of trying to figure out what is and what isn't going to be, and and uh, what we can do and what we can't do, that 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 is a headache. Uh, the the number of choices you make becomes exponentially harder mm-hmm. to to accommodate. That's where we had to do the um, the Dragon Age Keep. As a as a means of because we couldn't you just import the choices directly because we run a brand new engine. It's like how you know the I still remember when we started discussing it. Well, so I am like, well, we can't import the choices. We need uh, we either need a, an interface or something where you just go here's a list and blah 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 blah. blah. I pick all my choices I made. I'm like, and I'm trying to say that it's like, but you're never going to do that. And it's like, well, here's the dragon age keep. Here's all, here's all we did. with it. I was like, oh, okay. All right, all right, fair enough. They, I guess they were, and it, and it actually it's kind of neat. Uh, I don't know if you ever if you, did you use the keep. Oh yeah, it's great to set things that you never would have believed that you, you make choices right that you in your gameplay wouldn't do because you don't want to be at least in my circumstance a uh, a vile possessed abomination for <laughs> the first game and to see how that affects little things in the third and it's just uh, yeah it, it's I think it really really works. 
Uh, yeah, the, 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 that, that took a while, but there was a, there was a separate small team that sort of worked on the idea of the keep and having it be kind of its own little experience. And then an homage. So the players going through could be like, sure, not all those decisions actually even, even play into DAI, but sort of a, sort of a, 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 a walk down memory lane, as, as it were. And, and, and it was very stylistic and, and very neat. I, I, rather, I rather enjoyed where it ended up. Looking at uh, Dragon Age Inquisition now, you've completed the story. You've ended your time with uh, Dragon Age at this point and moving on to new things. Speaking to right. DAI, looking at the main uh, expression of the plot, are there any instances that you really wished you could have added? Small things, because you talked before you had two and you iteration made it it's the best it could be. But there's got to be that writer urge to explore those places that are just written down on a piece of paper. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's always going to be the case. I mean, uh, uh, the, it's never going to perfectly align with, like when we started Dragon Age Origins, we, we, you know, our, sort of our pie in the sky, okay, I, in an ideal world, this is exactly where we'd go. And it's, the thing with that is that that's the difference between making a game and writing a book. Writing a book mm-hmm. is pure narrative. If I want the plot to go in X direction, that's where it goes. Making a game is a collaborative effort and involves a lot of a lot of. Uh, uh, it, it's it's good in the sense that well, it's awesome in the sense that that you're working with other people and it's a, the collective uh, sort of uh, a product of their efforts. You know, you got all this art and gameplay and it's, it's an experience for the player. But that means it's not completely narrative driven, and and so things are going to have to change. You're going to have limitations put on you that that you you wouldn't ordinarily get to need to do. Sometimes. Oh, big plans are just going to change, and you're like, okay, so we, we roll with it. We, we try to preserve the heart of, of what our, our original plans were, and that that remained that remained the case. That the the, the, the big picture for the the how Dragon Age is developing never really never really changed. Uh, but uh, uh, for those for those stories that are, that are sort of left by the wayside, you're like, mm. I, I've been lucky in the sense that I've gotten a chance to to write a few books. A few novels where I've been able to take sort of a a story that that sort of never got told, and I was able to say, okay, here I can put it in the, I can go somewhere by myself and sort of get that out of my system and get it and get it into a novel. Yeah. So I've been I've been fortunate in that sense. But yeah, there's there, there's a few, and there's some that there's some things that that went away. Like, I mean, there's a there's a was a plot in the the, the DA2 expansion that got cut or. or uh, a few I, I wouldn't even want to want to mention just because they're so tragic. It's just just that they went away, and they only ever made sense in the context of the story they originally appeared in. So you you couldn't resurrect them. You couldn't change them because they it's like no. Nah, what made it kind of cool existed entirely of the context of where where it appeared. So it's like once that was gone, it's like it's gone forever. Those are the ones you mourn. Cause oh, I gotta ask though. I gotta oh, ask I, what that could be. I can't. I can't. I mean, uh, there's a, there's a couple that if I told, it would, just, it would just set the fandom on fire. And I know they that oh, they want, they really want to know. No, they don't. <laughs> and when you say they don't want to know, is it merely just because these things that you you really loved and this kind of idea, like you said, wouldn't work in the current climate of the game? Uh, sometimes, sometimes the things that I love. See, this is, this is the thing. It's something I love. So it generally involves pain and hardship. <laughs> Okay, okay. So it was like, oh, I almost got to, to do this one thing, and they would have really hated it. That would have been awesome. So that's just me. Uh, but, uh, um, or, or it, just, it just was a cool idea. And it's like, if I told them now, it's like, well, but in order to explain why it was cool, they required an explanation of the whole context around it. And that's, that's a, that, that's a, that's a trip, down, trip that's, I don't know, that, that's necessarily worth it. Um, yeah, that's the thing. They require so much context to discuss it. And even if it was something that was cool, it also is a shame that their reaction is like, ah, oh, it's wrong that you didn't do that. Well, you know, we can't do everything. And that, that's, that's what ultimately being in, uh, in, uh, in the game industry is just something you have to reconcile with. That, that there will always be things that are put away in the, in the, the trunk of the, the mm-hmm. could have been and uh, you just have to resign that, that that's where they will remain. And sometimes, too, it's like people, you know, tell me all the things that were painful about the process of writing X game. And yeah. It's like, 
do I really do I really do you really want me to do that? You might want me to do that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> well, yeah. Looking forward now. Let's. This is a natural uh, segue into this question. Your favorite characters, Dragon Age Inquisitions, the ones that you really believe resonated for you and uh, achieved what you set them out to be. That's a. But that's a, that's a difficult question, just because I, at various times I've been asked this question, and I can come up with different characters. Who's your favorite character? Well, today it's X. Mm-hmm. Next time, next time someone asks me, it'll be Y. Because I, I love them all for different reasons. Obviously, some more than others. And, and God, are there some fans who just hate it when I do that? You love Alistair? Yes, I do. I do <laughs> love Alistair. He was one that was very, very dear to me. He was, he was fun to write. He was easy to write. I, I had a very clear uh, idea of his voice. I knew instantly when he was talking about something that he did, he would or would not say. So yes, uh, and then, well, that's why you use him so often. Probably. Probably. <laughs> I, I tend to write Alistair a lot because I like Alistair. Yes. Ah, that's unfair. <laughs> so it's like, okay, well, fair enough. If you, if you want me to write about characters that I don't enjoy, that's, that's, that's okay, fair enough. Um, but it's not, it's not as if there's anybody that I didn't enjoy that either. Maybe, maybe not. You know, maybe they meant something different to me. Uh, there's different things I enjoy about them. I mean, and there's ones that stand out. I'll always have. I'll always love Morgan. It's like um, anybody who knows me knows that I don't have to dig down too far to reach a very, a very cynical, sarcastic place. But that sort of the the, the realm in which Morgan yeah. lives inside of me, the the part where that sort of stands off to the side and just sort of, you know makes biting sarcastic commentary about everything that you're doing but but you know the the part i i didn't want to make her mean so what lays beneath that shell i mean you only say well that's that's the that's the ice queen trope anybody could do that well fair enough anybody can try mm-hmm. i think i think i did it and I, I did a pretty good job so at the end of the day i was i was happy with uh with where she ended up i i really enjoy what happened with cassandra um, Cassandra was in DAI was a character that uh, I was worried um, would be inherently unlikable. That uh, that it's, I think it would be too easy to have somebody who whose main focus is their faith, who could come across as being too strident and self righteous, and those are very unlikable qualities for the most part. You, you know, the, so is there a way that I could make a character that discussed faith? And without coming across as as um, overly overly um, self righteous as, as overly critical of the fact that maybe your faith is different from hers, mm-hmm. or if you didn't have faith, that she could still acknowledge that, and that that, that didn't threaten her faith. And, and I wanted to see if that if I if I could approach that from a standpoint and make her an endearing, strong character. Um, and that, so I, I was very happy with with where that went. Dorian was another was another challenge that I, that I really enjoyed. He's another example of a character that instantly had a voice for me, and and it, it was very easy as I was writing him to to, to he just just chat away in my head and rebel every time I tried to get him to say something he just just would not say. And that's always I think for any writer that's a sign that 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 you've successfully created a character where now you've got you know. Your, your split personality going where they're sitting inside your head and you can just just in, in, step into their shoes and, and immediately have a sense of what how they feel about everything. I think that, that every, every, every writer understands what I mean when I say that. Well, looking at Dorian in particular, that his instances and a lot of his, um, not even loyalty missions, but just the missions personal to him, mm-hmm. were very, very raw. And I think... Those instances were some of the, at least for me, that's when it hit the highest points. Uh, Influence-wise, you know, was that a difficult process to dig and find that story, or was it something that, you know, kind of flowed out easily? <sighs> Dorian's story isn't my story. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gay, but Dorian's experiences are not my experiences. Um, however, uh, I think for, for him particularly, it was, it was a moment, there was some consideration of, okay, we have a we have a gay character. Does it need to be? Does he need to have a story that's about him being gay? No. However, there's no need also to avoid it. 
like Sarah is also uh, gay, but her story isn't it has anything anything at all to do with her being gay. So it's like, do we do we have gay characters and just avoid telling any story with them that it, that involves being gay, even though that's that's a story we can tell. That's maybe something that never had the opportunity to tell before. So it was an option. So it's like, well, so here's here's a possibility. So for Dorian, it, it was a matter of of. I didn't have to dig too far, but to sort of, sort of, if I had a gay character and I'm going to tell a gay story, that, that sounds that, that sounds like an odd ad- adjective. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm going to tell tell something that that's relevant to my experience, uh, then it's not exactly my experience, but I, it's something I empathize with. If I can if I can tell that, and is everybody going to get it? No, but. That's true with anything that I've written into a game. So, if I can tell something that's true and honest, that that it, it didn't need to be that way. Anybody could have written Dorian, but I think that that I got that chance made it something made something special. I think there there are a lot of people out there that responded to to Dorian's personal story in, in a very visceral fashion. You know, that, that some of them were very affected by it. So, it, it felt very personal to me. As something that I that I got the the opportunity to do, and and um, it was one of the one of those perfect storms of of, of opportunity and 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 implementation. I think um, ultimately, I, I think I think I, I might have done it a little bit differently if I was going to go back, but I think it, it it was one of those those times where where I, I had the opportunity to do something that that felt um, more like like. It was a piece of of my experience on the page, as opposed to some character I I I'd sort of created it from whole cloth. You know, what, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. A little, I I think I'm following you there with that one. Um, you talked about faith and the yeah. use of that in Dragon Age Inquisition. I yeah. love that there is one circumstance, and this is something that I don't think I talk about minority content. That if your Inquisitor is righteous and entirely believes the faith in which he is tasked to represent, he is given new opportunities in dialogue and other instances like that. And it's such a small little piece. What do you think the game, and well, firstly, why did you make that choice? And how do you believe the game deals with faith? What do you think the player should get of the notion of faith based on Dragon Age Inquisition? Well, not everyone's interested in dealing with faith. So we wanted the option to for the player to go, well, I don't care about that. Mm-hmm. We didn't want to force an opinion. So one of the things was, if we're going to involve faith as a central theme of the game, and it was, what really has to be, it has to involve is coming, the, letting the player come to terms with how they feel. And at one point, checking in with them again and saying, hey, has your opinion changed? And sort of whatever, whatever, wherever they've landed, challenging that, that view. That, that was a, a part of the point. Because you're not only challenged by the people in your party, you're challenged by events. You're, you're, when you, let's say, you decide that that you're, you accept this, and you're like, yes, I am the Herald of Andraste. I believe that this was fate. And then later in the game, it turns out you learn the truth of, of how you became, how that happened to you. And you're like, did that change your mind? And then mm-hmm. let the player, let the player think about it and give them options. And I think that that right from the get go was how we wanted to, to deal with that and, and sort of let the player, if they want to disbelieve, then, then disbelieve. I mean, as soon as, as soon as we introduced elves and dwarves as, as a, as a possibility, the elves, especially, it's like you have to mm-hmm. open up the possibility of letting the player just say the maker is not a thing. I don't agree with that. So it, it felt very natural. and just had to, we just didn't want to cut to a point where we were forcing beliefs on the player, like their experience, of the game, their, experience of faith is, is let them come to terms with themselves and ne- never never present faith in only one way it's like um if we're going to deal with faith let's deal with faith honestly let's 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 show how faith can be a positive force as well as how people can can abuse faith like there are organizations that mm-hmm. maybe uh that do terrible things in the name of faith but they're then in that same organization there are people that 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 believe wholeheartedly and sincerely and, and do good things. I thought that was something we didn't want to be purely cynical in our, in our approach, but neither did we want to give a definitive answer at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. You know, at the end of the day, when you, when you play through, no matter how you ended up 
saying, your character saying how, how you decided they felt about it. Could you say for certain that you weren't the Herald of Andraste? That you, that you weren't, that the, the, that the hand of God did not in fact pick you to play this role? If the answer to that is, well, I guess, no, ultimately, mm-hmm. there's no proof one way or the other, then yes, that, that is exactly what we intended. Absolutely fascinating. You've been a part of this, like you said, for over 10 years working on this yeah. franchise. You're, you're moving on to new stuff now, you know? You're, yeah. you're, what, do you, what are you taking from this sort of work, the work you've done there, and what do you hope to bring to the new stuff that you obviously can't accidentally slip when you're talking to me right now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> Wow. And part of me, well, you know, leaving was was a difficult choice, obviously. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's like ten years put into it, and it's like I, I, I it's like I, I, it's time to move. I was reaching the point where I was like, I, it's time for me to move on, but I don't want to let go. And it's like, mm-hmm. uh, so I, I don't really want to do it anymore, but I don't want anyone else to do it either. <laughs> well, we're talking to Patrick next. I'll make sure to uh, <laughs> tell him that. Oh, he, he knows exactly how I feel. So yeah. it's, like, it's a the process of, of letting go and just trusting that, okay, I, I've, I've, I've been in charge for three games. I put them out there. I've laid enough groundwork that it's real, not only to the, like I trust the members of my team there. They're all awesome writers. They all know, some of them know it better than I do. My memory's terrible and I always let the details slip, and somebody, generally the editors have to remind me. It's like, oh, you know, you know that thing you put in here? That was cut like two games ago. I'm like, oh, geez, I didn't really? remember we did that. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, it's like, a, it's like I, the pro, that's my problem. Is I, I, I've been around so long. I've been there from the beginning when, when the names or everything were different and things, things have been removed from the world, and then two years later I'm like, hey, I seem to remember this thing. Was that another thing? They're like, no, you cut that. Oh, right, right. It's like remembering too much is almost an issue. Mm-hmm. Um, or somebody talks to me about, you know, Empress Lee, and I'm like, well, you know, that, that time she was in, in Denerim during the Fifth Blight, and you're like, they're like, no, no, that's not a real thing anymore. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> wow. Um, but it, it was a process of, of just sort of, you know, uh, having worked on this, having having laid down the groundwork, it's 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 real for my writers. They they can run with it. Uh, Patrick is, is 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 you know more than capable. You know, they have their own ideas, and I have to reconcile with the fact that it's going to be different. It's, but it's, it's that's good. That that it's, it, they, I've laid enough groundwork that they understand the spirit of of what it, what it was, and and they will make it awesome. It's like it's like um. Patrick wrote a character that I created in the third Dragon Age novel called Cole. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it came down to it, I was originally going to write Cole, of course. It was, it was my character. But I also had plans for other characters. It's one of those things where I just want to, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. Okay, I can't do all of those things. So sitting down with Patrick when he came up to the project, I was like, well, what are you interested in? And one of the things he said was, oh, I just like this character, Cole. He said that my first reaction, of course, was, stay away. <laughs> Get away from him, you bitch! Um, that's that's my gut reaction, and it's like, okay, here's the thing: I don't have time to do do them all. And at least Patrick finds this really fascinating, and his treatment on Cole ultimately is probably. I mean, I, I don't I don't know exactly what I would, what I would have done because I hadn't actually started planning his his major arc in the game yet, so. Uh, I can't say how different it would have been, but I mean, his version of Cole is a, it's a little bit different from what mine would have been, for sure. Um, but he was excited about it. He understood what Cole meant and what the heart of he understood the heart of Cole. So the, what he produced is different from what I would have done, but I love it. I, I think it's I think it's great. And I can look yeah. at that and go. And he's like, yeah, I just don't want to. I don't want to ruin your character. I'm like, you did. He did not ruin my character. He's he's super. So it it ultimately it's the same for Dragon Age. He will take it. He will make it great. And I I look forward to being able to play a Dragon Age game because I never have. You've never played a Dragon Age game. No. By the time it goes out, I'm I'm sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> there are people who say, well, "What?" Okay. By the time it, the game goes out, I've played it hundreds and hundreds yeah. of times. Mostly when it's broken. Mm-hmm. So it's not that fun. So I'd, I've never actually played a version of the game that is that is complete from beginning to end. Because by, by the time it's actually finished and it is complete from beginning to end, I'm done. And I know every 
there is no corner of the story that is a mystery to me, right? So there's nothing yeah. for me to, to discover except, oh, hey, here's that cutscene I never quite saw to the end, and here it's finished. That would be quite cool, but I just couldn't do it. So I look forward to being able to have a Dragon Age come out that I don't know inside and out, and I can look, play through it, and I can I can shake my fist at, at Patrick, like, Patrick, <laughs> how dare you do that? Or, you know, or I can say, oh, wow, that, that is really cool. I love what they did with that thing. I don't think I would have done that, but they made it, they made it better. That's what I want. And Absolutely. meanwhile, I move on to something else, and, and that is fun and cool and shall not be discussed. I got fun and cool out of you, so that's something. <laughs> uh, finally, again, thank you so much for speaking to David Gator, the lead writer on Dragon Age franchise, on the Dragon Age franchise, excuse me, for years and years, moving on to uh, new work and having sharing hours with us today to spread some catharsis about this series that he put his blood, sweat, and tears in. What is a final message, I guess, you'd have for the fans? You talk a lot about... Uh community and how you're so involved and you, yeah. you you see your name on the forums you're there talking now you have an opportunity they can hear your voice you're leaving on to something else uh anything you'd like to say uh, i'm i'm i think i'm less involved now than i was before and that's, that's probably a good thing i think yeah it's uh, on levels it's best to leave the fans to to discuss what you know discuss things on their own and 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 then I'm less likely to to get sort of drawn into any of their their arguments and stuff. And it's cool. I mean, I don't I don't begrudge them any 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 of the, any of the the stuff they get up to. I mean, in the larger sense, I look at it and it's like it's amazing that they're so passionate about this. I mean, this is a world that I that I that I ultimately I guess I created. I mean, I'm not. It wasn't didn't, it's not solely mine. There's a team behind it, but the genesis of it was mine. Uh, this is this is uh, my baby for a long time. So when somebody takes something like that of yours and they have strong feelings about it, even if it's like, even if they get to the point where it's like, it has a different life for them than it does for me. Um, they they believe different things about it, or they have a vision of their own for where it should go, um, what it should entail, what characters should focus on. That, that's all. That's all. That's all super in a way. In a way. And I would never want them to think that that I that I begrudge them um, this sense of ownership that they have. I mean, I could go, I could you know pull the ball away, and I could say, no, this is mine. No, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, I, I made it for them, and if they love it, that's a compliment. And I love the the, the fan fiction and the fan art that comes out, and and sort of the the passion that they bring to it, and the different ideas and. It's 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 a it's very it's very inspiring, and I I I, I like having a bit more distance now than than I did before, to sort of to you know, not make them feel like I'm stepping on their toes and suggesting that there is one particular way they should feel about the game. And we made it so that people could take it and interpret it. And I don't want to, I don't want to be the word of God that says no. There's there's one way. I mean, I, in a sense, I can say this is a fact. This is a thing. You know, mm-hmm. but but. Do I need to do that? No. They, they, they should feel free to to interpret. And, and Patrick is really the custodian now, so he he can take it and he he can he can deal with the the, the various things. But I mean, uh, uh, the the as 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 much as ten years of it. Uh, I'm not I'm talking about ten years of fans. I'm talking mm-hmm. ten years of working on the game. As tiring as that was, I think if anything kept me kept me going and and invested and interested for as long as I as I did. I think it was, it was largely the, the continued interest of the fans because it's like if I ever reach the point where it's like, well, I don't know if I can do one more story about demons. Yeah. <sighs> but then I, 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 you know, sort of read some of the, the discussions online. It would get me thinking and questioning, right? Because there's a lot of times where, where they're, they're challenging even the way I would think about my own world. And sometimes I would disagree, but in disagreeing, sometimes I was able to find something that was something else. That that sparked a, an idea for me. So in some ways, they they've been very much a part of the process, even if they maybe don't think they were. Well, thank you so much for letting us be a part of uh, this process and talking yeah. about this uh, the franchise that you love so much, giving us hours and hours of your time. <laughs> it uh, it was not only illuminating, but I think a lot of people are gonna hear things about the series they love that they didn't know beforehand, and well, maybe. It's always cool to see from the other side, you know, all these fans that 
are demanding you put in the quest for solace for you just to say, well, no, you know, it wasn't what you think it would be. And someone has to make those tough decisions. It's nice to be able to uh, talk to at least one of the people that has to. Anyway, like, I love the word you use, catharsis. Yes. Now that I've, that I've moved on, yeah, there, there's a little bit of catharsis looking back. And, and so sometimes I wonder if I, if the way I remember things is exactly how it happened. Cause yeah. that, that's, that's what happens when you go through 10 years on uh, something, something that's, you know, so monolithic that went through so many twists and turns. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'll be like, well, I remember this happening. Somebody, somebody will come along after and be like, no, uh, it, this, this thing. Oh, and I'm like, oh, oh right. yeah. and I wanted to kill them. And, <laughs> <laughs> right, and then later on, I I, I got with it. So that, no, it, it's 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 weird when you look back on it and try to feel. I I, I I I ultimately I love the fact that that we we made it, we made it. Mm-hmm. Three really big stories, and some of them seemed like at the time seemed like they would never happen. I still remember the days when Dragon Age Origins seemed like it just it would just get canceled. Oh right, so that that was a thing that that you know and. It, just fans do not know the entire story. They can never know. And then it's mean on the inside. It's, it's the perspective is slightly different. Well, again, thank you so much for taking the time. David Gator, former writer on, let's see, this is what I was going to say it, former writer on the Dragon Age franchise. And yep. uh, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. This is Andy Burkowski for VGS. Something's on its way into the